What we're going to be talking about today is vertical circular motion. Now in order to visualize that I've made a little drawing over here. You can see that I've put my artistic skills to the test. We have a person who is spinning a mass M in a vertical circle. So that means that this mass M is going to be moving around first of all downwards until it reaches position 2 and then moving along this trajectory upwards along this arc back to position 1. How do the forces compare in the, those two positions? Position 1 against position 2. Okay well shall we just start off with position 1. In this case we have two forces assuming there's no air resistance of course which are acting on the mass the first one is the force due to gravity which is the weight now this force is going to be acting straight down so let's say that this over here is our weight vector and we're just going to say that this is mg now additionally there's going to be a force of tension which is going to be acting along the direction of this piece of string and uh, so let's just draw that along here so there's going to be a second force we're going to say that this force here is t now if we move down to position two over here notice that there's going to be some differences First of all, the tension will once again be acting along the direction of the string. So in this case, this is going to be upwards. So the tension will be along here. You can label that as T. But now the weight is going to be acting straight down, which is in the opposite direction. So the weight, let's call that Mg. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Along here is going to be Mg. Now let's apply Newton's second law to those two positions. So position one and position two. Remember Newton's second law says that the resultant force is equal to, let's call the resultant force just FR is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration when the mass is constant when, when uh, this is the case uh, in this situation. So in the second one, our resultant force, let's call that FR again, that's also going to equal MA. Now, the resultant force is the vector sum of the two forces. Now, in the first case, in position one, MG and the tension are acting in the same direction. So we're just going to go ahead and add them. So the resultant force is going to be equal to MG plus the tension that's going to equal ma. In our second position though, the tension is opposite to the weight, so we need to take them away. So in this case, the resultant force is going to equal to the tension minus mg, and that's going to equal ma. Now there's one more simplification that I would like to do in this equation. That is remembering that the acceleration when an object is moving in a circle is actually equal to v squared over r. If you're not quite so sure where this equation comes from, uh, there's a video in which I derived this. However, every time we're moving in a circle, our acceleration is actually equal to v squared divided by r. So rather than acceleration, we can just write v squared divided by r in all of those circumstances, like so. So mv squared over r, just our centripetal acceleration, like so. Okay, now what we can do is simply rearrange for the tension now. So let's go ahead and rearrange for the tension. Let's um, also give the tension a little bit of a uh, subscript just to differentiate it. So the tension in position one, let's call that T1. And the tension in position two, let's call that T2. Okay, so just rearranging for T1, we get that T1 will be mv squared over r minus mg. 
and if we do exactly the same for t2 we're going to get that t2 will be mv squared over r plus mg notice something pretty amazing in position one over here the tension definitely has to be lower compared to position two the reason for that is well mathematics we can see how mv squared over r is being added the weight or taken away the weight which makes the tension a lot greater in the posi in position two this result makes a great deal of physical intuitive sense as well in position one when the weight is acting towards the center the centripetal force or remember the center seeking force is actually in part provided by the force of the weight in the second position here though um, it's the other way around so the weight is acting the opposite direction to the centripetal force so in order to keep the object moving at a constant velocity along the circle the tension has to be increased in order to maintain um, that speed one final question you might ask is what happens uh, in a different position let's say that this position here is position three and we have the same mass and uh, we have the piece of string acting uh, more or less horizontally well in this case the force of the weight that will be acting straight down at 90 degrees so this is going to be mg now our tension t will be acting well towards the center like so in this case there's going to be a 90 degree angle between the two forces which means that they're going to be completely independent so in this case the tension will be equal to the centripetal force which is mv squared divided by r okay folks so this is our tension in those three positions remember the tension is always smallest in uh, at the top of the trajectory and always greatest at the bottom of the trajectory we have our equations for t1 and t2 that you need to be able to derive pretty quickly in an exam situation hopefully this makes sense if there are any questions please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing